Minesweeper is a game in which the player attempts to clear an initially hidden grid to make all of the tiles visible that do not contain a randomly placed mine. Clicking on a randomly placed mine results in a game over situation the player has lost. Otherwise, the player gets hints as to where the mines are placed by numbers on grid squares that have been uncovered that shows the number of adjacent mines. This information can be used to calculate which tiles contain mines and which tiles are clear to click on. Once the player has successfully made all squares that do not contain mines visible, they have won the level. The game level is generated roughly as follows. First of all, an empty grid of a width and height determined by the level difficulty is generated. Onto that grid, a number of mines are randomly placed, again the number determined by the level difficulty. The danger value for each tile on the grid is calculated by looking at all of the adjacent tiles, up, down, left, right and all diagonal directions for this tile, to see how many contain mines. The total number of neighbouring tiles with mines determines the tile's danger level. Every tile on the grid begins in an initial hidden state until the player begins uncovering tiles by clicking on them. In this video I'll show you how to program a simple implementation of the Minesweeper game using JavaScript and drawing to a canvas element. As usual, the entire source code and associated files and a written version of this lesson can all be found on my website, a link to which I'll place in the description. We'll begin by creating a simple HTML5 document. In the head of the document, we'll use a script tag to load our Minesweeper game JS file, the JavaScript file, which will contain the code for our game. And in the body, we'll create a canvas element with, uh, with the 300 pixels, a height of 400 pixels, and the ID game to which we'll be doing our drawing. Our JavaScript code will begin with some global variables. CTX will be a reference to the 2D drawing context of our canvas element. Game time and last frame time will be used to keep track of the elapsed time in the game itself, and current second, frame count and frame last second will simply be used for keeping track of the frame rate. Offset X and Offset Y will store the calculated position of the top left of our grid when a new level is started. This will be calculated based on the number of tiles that make up the grid for the current difficulty and the width and height of the canvas element. And finally, grid will be an array that contains the tiles that make up our Minesweeper grid. We'll use a global object called mouse state to keep track of the current mouse state after mouse events have occurred. X and Y will be the position of the mouse cursor on the canvas element and click will be an array containing the x and y position of the last click event or null if no click event is waiting to be processed. The global object game state will be used to keep track of the current difficulty level of the level being played, the current screen that is to be shown to the player, a boolean flag as to whether or not a new best time has currently been achieved for the current difficulty level, time taken for the current level being played, and the width and the height tiles are to be drawn at on the grid in pixels. We'll now specify a list of difficulties the player can choose from when starting a new level. Each difficulty will be given a name, a grid width and height in number of tiles, the number of mines that will be randomly placed on the grid for this difficulty level, the current best time for this difficulty level, and a menu box which will be the start and end Y positions to click on this difficulty on the main menu which will be calculated automatically. So we'll set it an initial value of 0, 0. For our example we'll start with three difficulties to choose from, easy, medium and hard. We'll now create a tile class which will be used to represent each tile that makes up the grid for our Minesweeper game. 
Each tile has an X and Y position, a boolean flag as to whether or not this tile has a mine on it, the danger which will be calculated by seeing how many neighbouring tiles also contain mines, and the current state of this tile which will start off as hidden. The tile class calc danger method begins by assigning a reference to the current game difficulty to a variable called cdiff. Using a couple of nested loops, we then loop through starting at the tile above and to the left of this tile, and ending at the tile below and to the right of this tile. We then check and see if the current px, py values are the same as this tile's position, in which case we skip this iteration. Otherwise, we check and see if the px or py fall outside of the grid area if they're less than zero, or if they're greater than or equal to the current game difficulties width and height, in which case we also skip this iteration. Otherwise, we look at the grid array at this position to see if the tile there has a mine. If this is the case, we increase the danger value for this tile. We'll also create a method to allow the player to flag game tiles. This tile object method We'll check if the current state is hidden for the tile, in which case it will change it to flagged, or check if the state is flagged, in which case it will change it back to hidden. The player won't be allowed to flag a tile in any other state. When a grid tile is clicked on, it will be handled by the click method for that tile. This will first check if the current state for the tile is not hidden. If the tile is in any other state, then we'll simply leave the function here. Otherwise, if the tile has a mine, we will call the game over method as the player has lost the level. If, however, the tile has a danger value greater than zero, then we'll simply set the tile's state to visible. Or if the danger value is zero, then we'll set the state to visible, but we'll also call the tile reveal neighbors method. Once we've completed these checks, we'll call the function check state to see if the player has completed this level. The tile reveal neighbors method, which is called when a tile with a danger level of zero is made visible, begins by setting the value of the variable cdiff to the current game difficulty. We then loop through all of the neighbors for this tile, starting with the tile above and to the left and ending with the tile below and to the right. If the current coordinates which are being iterated over are the same as this tile, then we continue and go on to the next iteration of this loop. Otherwise, we check and see if the px, py values that we're currently looking at are outside of map bounds, if they're less than zero, or if they're greater than or equal to the current difficulties grid width or height, in which case we also skip over this iteration. Otherwise, we calculate the grid index of this neighbouring tile, and we check and see if the grid position at this index has the current state hidden. If so, we set the current state for this tile to visible, and if this tile also has a danger level of zero, we call the reveal neighbors method for this grid tile as well. Our check state function will be used to see if the player has completed the current level. We'll begin by iterating over all of the tiles in the grid array, and if any of the tiles do not have a mine but have not currently been revealed, their state is not currently visible, we'll simply exit the function. Otherwise, we'll set our game state global's time taken property to the current game time, and we'll sign a reference to the current game difficulty to the cdiff variable. We'll then check and see if there's not currently a best time for this game difficulty if the best time value is currently zero, or if the game time that the player has taken is less than the current best time for this difficulty, in which case we'll set the game state new best flag to true, and we'll update the best time for this difficulty setting. We'll then change the game state screen property to 1 to display the game over one screen and exit the function. Our game over method, which is called when the player clicks on a tile that has a mine, simply changes the game state screen property to lost. The start level method, called to begin a new game, will be passed the ID of the difficulty at which this level will be played and we'll reset some of the game state global properties. The new best for the new best score flag will be reset to false. The time taken for the current level will be reset to zero. The game state difficulty will be set to the ID of the difficulty passed. And the current screen will be set to playing. The game time global and last frame time 
global will both be reset to zero and the grid array global will be cleared, will be set to a length of zero. We'll then create a variable called cdiff with a reference to the currently selected game difficulty. We will then calculate the values of the offset to x and offset y globals. These will be calculated by multiplying the grid width and height for the current difficulty by the tile width and height, subtracting this from the overall canvas width or height, and then dividing the result for each dimension by 2. These values will be used when drawing to center the Minesweeper grid on the canvas. We'll then loop through all of the rows, PY, and each of the columns within each row, PX, that make up the current difficulties width and height, and for each position we'll push a new tile to the grid array. We'll now place mines on our grid by creating a temporary variable called mines place with an initial value of zero, and then continue doing a loop whilst the value of mines place is less than the current difficulty's total number of mines. For each iteration of the loop, we'll select a random index within the grid array, and we'll check and see if the tile at that index already has a mine, in which case we'll go back to the start of the loop. Otherwise, We'll set the has mine property of this tile to true, and we'll increase the mines place counter by one. We'll then loop through all of the grid tile objects, and for each entry we'll call the calc danger method.